Hello everyone, welcome back to Byte Vigor channel. In software development, there are times when we need to provide a proxy for an object to control access to it. This is where the proxy design pattern comes in. The proxy pattern uses a proxy object to control access to the actual object, providing an indirect way to access it. Imagine you are a landlord, but you don't want to deal with tenants' various needs and issues directly, so you hire an agent to handle them for you. This agent acts as a proxy for the property, dealing with the tenants while you only need to communicate with the agent. This way, you don't have to face the tenants directly. This is the basic concept of the proxy pattern, controlling access to the actual object through a proxy. Simply put, the proxy pattern provides a proxy for other objects to control access to them. According to Wikipedia, a proxy in its most general form is a class that functions as an interface to something else. A proxy is a wrapper or agent object that the client calls to access the real serving object behind the scenes. Using a proxy can simply forward requests to the actual object or provide additional logic. Extra functionality can be provided in the proxy, such as catching when operations on the actual object are resource intensive or checking preconditions before calling operations on the actual object. To better understand this pattern, Let's take a simple security door program as an example, using Java to implement the proxy design pattern. First, we define a door interface and a concrete door implementation. Here, the door interface defines two basic methods, open and close. The lab door class implements the door interface and defines the specific behavior for opening and closing the door. Next, we create a proxy class, secure door, to protect the door we want to secure. The secure door class also implements the door interface, but it adds an authentication step when calling the open method. The constructor accepts a door object and stores it in the door member variable. The open method first calls the authenticate method to verify if the password is correct. If the password is correct, it calls the open method of the actual door object. Otherwise, it prints an error message. The close method directly calls the close method of the actual door object. Here's an example of how to use the proxy. In this example, we create a secured door object and pass in a lab door object. We attempt to open the door with an incorrect password, and the system indicates it cannot be opened. When we use the correct password, the door opens smoothly and then closes. Through this example, we can clearly see how the proxy pattern controls access to the actual door, lab door. The proxy object, secured door, adds a security step providing protection for the door without needing to change the original door's implementation. This pattern offers a flexible and secure way to manage access to objects. The proxy pattern can be used not only for the security door example, but also for implementing data mappers. For example, I recently used this pattern to write an object data mapper, ODM, for MongoDB. I wrote a proxy on top of the Mongo classes and utilized the magic method underscore underscore call. All method calls were proxied to the original Mongo class and results were returned as is. But in the case of find or find one, data was mapped to the desired class objects instead of returning a cursor. So when should we use the proxy design pattern? You can use the proxy pattern when you need to perform additional operations when accessing an object. Examples include lazy loading, access control, and logging. The proxy pattern can help you control access to objects without modifying existing code. Finally, let's summarize today's lesson. The proxy design pattern controls access to the actual object through a proxy, providing an indirect way to access it. In actual development, the proxy pattern can help us create a more flexible system structure and improve code maintainability and scalability. Thank you for watching today's video. If you found this video helpful, Please like it and subscribe to the Byte Vigor channel so you won't miss more exciting content. See you in the next video.